Oh, hey, hold on just a second. My Rue earpiece is ringing. Hello, Rue? You want me to host season 16? Well, you know I don't host, but I'll try anything once. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Pussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing episode seven of RuPaul's Drag Race UK season four. And today, Rue's gone missing. <gasps> Okay, she was probably just filming another spinoff for the franchise. But in her absence, we have Michelle as main judge and Raven as guest judge. And today our queens were challenged to give a strong drag family resemblance makeover to the queen team, who we learn are the behind the scenes motherly forces keeping our queens fed, on time, and generally healthy during the long filming days of Drag Race. And it was a beautiful episode, sure, but dare I say there's been a robbery. Or two. <laughs> So we'll be breaking down each queen's makeover as I saw it, and then at the end of today's video, we'll be taking a look at some allegations that are now floating around online from Kimora Amore about a future Canada versus the world cast member. We got a lot to cover today, and I can't wait to break it all down with you, but first... Your Scentbird scents are here. <gasps> I can't wait to sniff them. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that gives you the opportunity to try a new designer cologne, perfume, or even unisex scent every single month. And Scentbird works directly with brands, offering over 600 scents available to ship directly to your doorstep. For example, this month I received Mankind Rise from Kenneth Cole. I describe this one as fresh, bright, sporty, and sophisticated with notes of mandarin, cypress, and sandalwood. And Amber Royale by Ormond Jane, which has has notes of rose, jasmine, and bergamot. And my personal favorite this month, Oud for Greatness from Anishio. It's a spicy, woodsy scent with a lavender freshness highlighted with patchouli and musk. And the tea is designer fragrances can be expensive and hard to pick out, but Scentbird's got you covered with their online quiz designed to help you discover scents you'll love. And each bottle contains a 30-day supply, which means you'll get to give each scent a real-life wear test without the commitment to a full bottle's price tag. And normally a Scentbird subscription is about $17 per month. But when you click my link in the description of this video and use code BUSSYQ at checkout, you'll save 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That's a little over $7 to start smelling like a million bucks. And Scentbird has not only saved me money by allowing me to try tons of new designer scents at home, but also helped to impress my friends, family, and those special other ones with new exciting fragrances. So what are you waiting for? Treat yourself or someone you love with the gift of Scentbird this holiday season. And make sure to use code BUSSYQ to save 55%. Thanks, Scentbird, for sponsoring today's video. Now, bring out the clones. First up, it's Jombers Blonde and Nano Noir. So this makeover, I think of the entire cast, left the most to be desired for me in terms of actual transformation. I wasn't really getting drag family so much as even the judges pointed out, I was getting friends hanging out who kind of like to dress similarly because the two did match very well. Yes, and Jombers and Olivia, Nanu's outfit, were really pretty, stylistically speaking, but they're there was nothing really here that screamed John Burrs other than it's a cute, fashionable look, which I think really was the problem John Burrs was facing in this challenge. John Burrs' biggest standout moments in the competition thus far have been in the Rusical and Snatch game. She's got a huge personality, but hasn't really channeled that into a specific aesthetic yet that is easily capturable, I think, in a challenge like this. And even more confusing, I think, was the shtick of her and her partner doing this mime clown kind of fantasy on the runway. The performance of what they did was very fun, but again, was like, why are they doing this? And how does it relate back to John Burrs? And if we are gonna go with this clown thing, like give me the full fantasy, give me full drag, not just two pretty ladies hanging out on the runway together doing a mime show. And this challenge, I will say, has to be one of the toughest for the queens because they're trying to sell to the judges and an audience what they think they have imparted their drag is is onto the audience. Which is to say, we've only seen these queens for six weeks and we don't have the full idea of who they truly are. So our interpretations of what their drag is may not necessarily be the full picture of who they are as a queen. In essence, this is a branding challenge and I'm not sure what brand John Burrs was really selling here or why. So I'm going to give her makeover a 
cute, even if their outfits were pretty cute. Next up, Pixie Polite and Trixie True Love. So Pixie is paired with Wendy, who we learn is a day one queen team care member. And girl has Miss Wendy seen and unfortunately had to adjust it all. Even a bollock, that poor, poor woman. I'm sure she does not get paid enough. And these two have quite the interesting visual presentation on the runway. But before I break down what they're actually wearing, I wanna compliment the message of what Pixie was imparting with these outfits. She tells us these looks are inspired by her time spent in childhood in her nan's garden. It was the one place, she says, where she felt like she could truly be herself. And so now here Pixie is as an adult living that childhood fantasy and they're dressed as fairies. The actual silhouettes of what they're wearing are even kind of Tinkerbell-esque. And I think the idea and concept of what Pixie did to herself and Trixie was absolutely sold on the runway. I understood the perspective of where she approached this makeover from. However, it was in the execution that I think she really struggled. She herself looks pretty good. The outfit fits her, her makeup and hair look amazing. But when you pan over to Wendy, Trixie True Love, you see that Pixie has kind of just taken what would have fit her in terms of the makeup and the outfit and just slapped them on to Trixie True Love instead of adjusting for this other person's face contours and body proportions. The dress kind of swallows Trixie True Love whole and the makeup doesn't do enough to compliment Wendy's actual face. Even she comments that she felt older in drag than she expected to. So it was unfortunate that that was the overall effect of what Pixie accomplished. The branding Pixie nailed, but the actual makeover part, she failed. This was a and next up we've got Black Peppa and her partner Floor, who she transforms into Chili Peppa. We love a well-rounded spice cabinet. These two come out in some very structured little black dresses that are honestly really great artistic silhouettes. And while some queens approached this challenge from like a matrilineal perspective tonight, Black Peppa went for the twins perspective, twinning, and has completed that fantasy out with ponytails that even like hook up at the end points. It was taking me back to the season three drag queens in Space challenge when they were like, we are on the lookout for single guys. And the actual makeup and transformation of what Black Peppa did tonight, I think was top tier. The club kid kind of clown makeup was really cool. The ponytails, an excellent touch. And overall, these two were 100% giving me drag family resemblance. When to become one, when to become one. That said, whose drag family are we talking about here? I'm not sure it was Black Peppa's so much as it was Danny Beard's. And Danny even shades Black Peppa in the workroom for doing the white face, which Danny has kind of made a trademark on the show. And no, of course she doesn't own it, but I very much could see this exact silhouette and face paint on Danny. Which is to say, was this what I expected Peppa to pull out of her spice cabinet for this makeover challenge? Not necessarily. When I think of Peppa's drag, I think of headpieces, reveals, high fashion and surprises, and this definitely fits the surprise category, but did it fit the others? I'm not so sure. I also think it was a fair critique to hear from the judges that they wanted to see more from the neck down because it was a very head and hair focused look. I certainly wasn't underwhelmed by these looks, but I also wasn't overwhelmed. Maybe just like a nice safe hot <laughs> whelmed. That said, I do think it was the success in makeup execution that I think for me at least definitely allowed this look to stand above like for example, John who also went for a clown type of fantasy. Next up, grab a slice or two tonight with Cheddar and Brie Gorgeous. So Cheddar of the cast members, I think has the easiest time in her makeover transformation. Gemma, who becomes Brie, confesses that she does drag every single day because you are born naked and the rest is drag after all. That is to say, she's already feeling her fantasy before the makeover even starts and I lived for her. But it did kind of put Cheddar, I think one notch above the rest in terms of fairness today. That said, Cheddar does not take it easy in this transformation, even though she could have. She turned Gemma into a full clone copy sister daughter alien spawn twin from the alien deity galaxies far above and beyond and away. They both got these beautiful double victory hair rolls. Breeze is blue and Cheddar's is this reddish auburn autumnal color. And I love that their looks overall are so similar yet contrast in really beautiful ways with those blue and red colors. Cheddar succeeded in all of the ways that you really want want to see a queen succeed in a makeover challenge. The execution of the outfits is beautiful. They are unmistakably styled, like Cheddar would style something. The makeup, very Cheddar. And overall, you feel 100% transported to the world of gorgeous when you see these looks on the runway together. Cheddar gave birth on the runway, and Papa don't preach because she is keeping the baby. This makeover was high. 
Next. Next up, did somebody say dolls? Valley of the dolls. It's Dakota and Brigitte Schiffer. So Dakota is paired with queen team member Lucy, another day oneer. And they are such a cute little pairing who you can tell through the camera have such a beautiful chemistry together. Unfortunately though, the makeover experiment from team Schiffer was not well received by the judges. However, I disagree totally. The actual transformation of Lucy into Brigitte, I thought was beautiful. And the two absolutely gave drag family resemblance and more importantly, they gave Schiffer drag family resemblance. These two were 100% giving that 60s little doll fantasy that Dakota sells on the runway every single week. She said, branding? Yes, ma'am, I've been giving you branded. I've been giving you 60s Valley of the Dolls and I'm gonna give it to you here again in the makeover challenge. Dakota, I think accomplished drag family resemblance a hell of a lot more than many of the other queens tonight. I was so confused with their placement of her in the bottom. The judges seemed so heavily focused on not liking the actual outfits that Dakota was presenting as this pair. And Michelle, of course, gave the classic, you're giving the same silhouette type of critique to Dakota to sell the reason of why she should be in the bottom. It was all just giving very forced storyline and did not understand. Dakota in the bottom for this? I could not believe it. This makeover was hot. <laughs> and finally, Danny Beard and Mizzy Mustache. So Danny is paired with Miss Mystique, who we learn has a bit of hesitation in her pairing with Danny because she finds out that she may have to wear some facial hair on the runway. And this for her is an idea that's making her uncomfortable at first because she's somebody who has been mistaken for a male person, she says in her life, and that hasn't set well with her. And Danny hears all of this and approaches Mystique with open arms and open heart and really, I think, did an excellent job of welcoming her into the Danny Beard family. Like Danny did an excellent job of the transformation of Mystique into Mizzy, and this pairing was really fun to watch on the runway. The makeup hair and outfits these two were wearing were beautiful compliments to each other, and you know in a makeover challenge when someone is having that much fun that the makeover was a success. Plus, I think Danny absolutely nailed the branding aspect of this challenge. These looks were unmistakably of the Danny Beard catalog, and because the final looks were so gender effy, I think they were a great representation of what drag can allow someone to feel. And these two, I think of any other pair, had one of the most beautiful storylines. You got to see how the power of drag allowed someone to overcome a deeply held fear. Plus, I mean, how can you not love the drag name Mizzy Mustache? Iconic. I did think it was kind of funny though that Danny emphasized the facial hair in these looks so much, despite this really only being, what, the second time that we've seen Danny actually emphasize facial hair on the runway? I think last week with the pink mustache was really the first. Every other time she's pretty much just painted over it in white. Regardless though, I had so much fun with these looks and I think the makeover was absolutely hot. Which is to say obviously my hottest hot tonight goes to Danny Beard and Mizzy Mustache. I did also ask my patrons though to vote on their hottest hot tonight and they voted for Cheddar and Brie Gorgeous. So the win tonight goes to Cheddar Gorgeous and this did surprise me a little bit because I thought the storyline that Danny and Mizzy had was really compelling and Cheddar's makeover just felt a little too effortless for me. I was like, oh, I like to see somebody have a challenge or obstacle and overcome it and Cheddar was just like, no obstacle no problem, I'm still gonna kill it. That said, I do think the win was well-deserved. That was another makeover that absolutely blew me away. The bottom two tonight were what really got me, gal. Dakota and the bottom two, I could not believe it. And y'all already heard my reasonings, but I think it should have been Pixie and Johnbers. The idea that Dakota would be in the bottom at all, much less going home later because she was giving a branded silhouette that she had very much trademarked as her own in a makeover challenge? Make it make sense. Sense. It was just like, oh, okay, this is when y'all wanted Dakota to go home, so you just made some shit up and threw her in the bottom. Whatever. And the lip sync between Dakota and Pixie goes exactly how you expect it to go when one of the queens is there for a third time in this competition. I did react to this lip sync and the other best parts of this episode, though, in my new Patreon exclusive podcast called The Bus Stop. And you can go listen to that and see my reaction over on patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my YouTube videos, access to that exclusive content, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, and more. And you can join by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. But Dakota goes home, which I agree, Pixie probably had the better lip sync here. I just don't think Dakota should have been there at all. Now, on 
to the drama. So Kimura Moore was seen on Twitter earlier this week saying this. I love that people are calling out others, dot, dot, dot. Since we are on the topic of blackface, I think it's time we are open and honest about a Canada's Drag Race queen allegedly doing a form of blackface and everyone just keeping quiet. Thursday, anyone? This quote tweet, by the way, was retweeting someone else who had retweeted a video of two seeming to be teenagers doing blackface in some sort of public place. It might be a Walmart, I'm not really sure, where they wrote, meanwhile, in Utah. And I have censored these people actually doing blackface here for sensitivity purposes, but it had been going viral online in spaces like TikTok and Twitter. And to that tweet, a person on Twitter responded to Kimora writing, how about you say their name instead of stirring the pot? And Kimora said, oh, I will, but I've learned that conversations are better than posts. And sure enough, Kimora followed through that following Thursday in a Twitter live space where she's her talking along with Isis Couture about the person who allegedly did this form of blackface. This is what they say. Playing with these nice people. It's Rita Vega. Come on. Can we have heard of Rita? <laughs> yes. Like, I, I said, this is someone I respect. It's not, this is not shade. It's not to bring down anyone. They're apparently, allegedly, OCN said to all of us that this, she was performing, I think it was a Glee theme, and she was Amber Riley. What do you mean, allegedly, girl? OCN's payment went to Rita. What do you mean, allegedly? I'm saying allegedly because we have to say allegedly, Isis. We got to say allegedly. So, yeah. allegedly. Allegedly. OCN got the yes. garment, the look from Ms. Baga, Ms. Rutabaga, because sis had the garment because she was performing as Amber Riley. Is that what I heard? But this, this, this isn't about cancellation. I need to know that this wasn't done and that this isn't something that's just okay. You can't just wear our skin and be okay and, and, and think that we're going to be okay and, and put some braids on. Like, And I want to highlight, she was using the words alleged and allegedly here when discussing the person who allegedly did a form of blackface. Playing with these nice people. It's Rita Baga. And she is also re sharing this story from the perspective of another queen, Ocean Aqua Black. Which is just to say, alleged information is just that, alleged information. And I expect due to the gravity of this alleged information, there will be more developments to follow, so I will be tracking this closely here on my channel. But I'd love to know what all of y'all are thinking about this, as well as the outcome of this episode of Drag Race UK. So let me know down in the comments below. And as always, I want to say thanks to you for watching today's video and give an extra special shout out to today's video sponsor, Scentbird, who's keeping me smelling absolutely mm, delicious. Don't forget you can check them out using the link in the description of this video to save 55% off your first month of Scentbird. I also want to say thanks so much to my generous patrons who support me over on patreon.com slash bessiequeen and give an extra special shout out to Aiden the Individual, Ace of Haeckel, Ashley Brungart, Cyrus, Sticky, Felicia, Ricky, Hector Simancas, Jeffrey Kyle, Laura, Louis Labrador, <laughs> Luke Peterson, Mark James, Matthew Burns, Matu, Michelle, Your Bell, Sailor, Steven, Topher, Travis Landy, <laughs> and Bailey, who are all supporting me at the Bussy Queen Collective. Tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye. <coughs> oh my god, I just choke and die right here.